Hi, this is Leighton Orient uh, Stadium, where we're going to host the uh, Africa Cup of Nations 2014. It's a, a, it's a venue which is spectacular and we're going to have full capacity and we want all Africans to be here supporting their countries for that big games of the finals. We don't know who is going to be the finals, but all countries should test one another and be here. Yeah, games for deep ball, lock and heal up, much you need up. Better love creeping, shaking like an headway. Passing all around quick, don't deny me it. Bust some music, something that I leave for, both to leave for. Making no sleep for the dark of your light. One people, short to your talk. One people, you're about evil. Man to a Zulu, shanty. One people, Africa. One people, Africa. One people, Africa. Run, Kadede. Hi, I'm Daniel Otaya. We are here at the Peacock Gymnasium in uh, East London with uh, uh, the chairman of the National Council of Sports, Mr. Uh, Bosco Onik uh, Ogwal. Welcome, sir, and uh, also other members. We have Dennis Kirunda and Mr. Matthias Sendawa. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. Ogwa, we are so privileged to see you that you are in the UK here, to see that you work with us to develop sports projects with the Ugandans and diaspora. Um, as the new chairman for the National Council of Sports, tell us how you see we should work hand in hand with your body to see that we develop sports on the grassroots level in the UK and as well as work in partnership with your uh, board in Uganda. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. Uh, National Council of Sports of Uganda is mandated by Parliament to manage, promote and uh, develop sports in uh, Uganda and uh, outside. We have started a lot of programs or activities to develop sports. Right back uh, in Uganda, we have started going down the grassroots to organize the sports uh, body. The National Council of Sports has already established uh, what we call the District Sports Council. The District Sports Council uh, is, a, is a body that comprises of all the chairpersons, all secretaries of all the sports disciplines within the district. And uh, all these people are the ones who should now identify or organize or manage sports at the district level. So therefore, they can now be able to know who is where. But we think this, it will be much better if we go down to the grassroots and form what we call the district, the village sports council. The village sports council will be the last unit in our uh, organogram. Yeah. That is where the athletes are, and those are the people who will know who is where and who does what, who participates in which activity. And we, if we can be able to do that, then I think we will have done a lot for sports development. We are not only doing it at that uh, level. We have been moving around the districts. We went in the east to Kapchorwa, Mbale, and uh, we went and visited our sporting equipment. You know, when we are talking about sports development, you can never develop without facilities. So we are also looking at the levels or standards of our facilities and how we can uh, modernize them, how we can bring them to modern standard. We have a stadium in Mbale called Mbale Municipal yeah. stadium, stadium that belongs to National Council of Sports. But when you look at it at this moment, you, you wouldn't think it is a, a sporting facility. You think it just may be a market or something else. But we want to now bring it to a standard befitting of modern sports. It is not only Mbale Municipal Council Stadium. There are other stadiums everywhere within the country which have gone down. But the government has come up to renovate them and bring them to the level of the modern sports. Now, the stadiums may be developed, but what about the will and the heart to develop sports? It's with every individual. It is not my responsibility, myself alone, not the responsibility of the National Council of Sports alone, 
not the function of the government alone, but the functions of everybody to develop sports, including those who are within or those who are outside. Now, if we talk of all of us getting involved in sports development, then that now need people like you. It calls for people like you who are in diaspora. Uh, a week ago, I attended uh, uh, the launch of Africa. Uh, uh, I said, Africa sports sports in diaspora. Yeah, that is a very good initiative. I must actually thank the organizers for that uh, function for coming up with that kind of activity. That is actually the gist of sports development in diaspora. Like people who are outside from Uganda, people who are outside, like in London, but who are coming from Uganda can never be known if it is not because of the functions like this acid. And you know what? When I came for the functions of acid, where I was invited officially to come and attend, I got to know many things. One of them is that uh, there exists what we call African Nation, Nations Cup, UK. And this is for, for uh, African countries which are in UK, who always come together once in a year to play a game. This is a very good initiative. Not only that, I even found out that there is what is called Kupa UK, which is a subsidiary of Kupa uh, Uganda. And this one brings together all the Ugandans who are in UK, who are playing football in different, uh, from different places. And uh, I'm also told that uh, when we had the, the, we played last, we played against, uh, we played against Tanzania, yeah. one of the players, one of the strikers there, Actually, came from this organization from uh, FUFA UK. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is now what we are talking about. How do we identify those kind of people? We cannot identify them if we don't work with people who are outside. We cannot identify them if we don't have a team, uh, I mean, an organization like uh, FUFA UK. We cannot identify them if we don't have something like African Nations Cup UK. We cannot identify them if we are not working with the African sport in diaspora. Now, how do we work with these people? For us, we are open. We said, like for FUFA UK, I've even just talked to the members and I said, please write a letter uh, express, expressing your interest to affiliate with National Council of Sports. And we see how we can work together as a team. Because sports management or development is a function of everybody. We, if I succeed, all of us have succeeded and the nation has succeeded. So that is how we are doing it. We do appreciate your words and uh, we believe working in partnership with uh, Uganda's Nation, National Sports of Council, we will sell our country to the uh, highest level. Um, but I want to hear from your side, how are you going to encourage the tourism industry to understand that they should work hand in hand with you so that you can share the budget in order to sell the brand of Uganda? Because sports is a key brand, which sports tourism is a key brand which can sell the country. And we believe sports tourism brings in money to all platforms. In the, uh, if we put on a, a big event, for example, in Nambole, anyone who is selling a vinyewa in a winner will earn money. Those ones who are having airlines will earn money. Hotels will earn money. Uh, anyone who is working, like selling tickets, will be earning money. So we want to see that you come up also with the concept of incorporating your uh, work with the tourism, in, tourism sector so that we can have an initiative of sports tourism for selling our country through any sporting programs? Uh, Dan, that is a very good uh, idea, but I will not be able to do that alone. Yeah. People who are managing sports, yeah. like you, should now come in with their proposals and say, we want to do these activities. Because for us, we don't manage the sports. I mean, we don't run the sports. Yeah. But people who are running sports like uh, sporting activities like you are the ones to come up with their proposal and say, uh, National Council of uh, Sports, we want to do this. You come and say, we want to do this. Another one comes and says, we want to do this. Then for us, we just grant you permission. We say, please do this, follow this, do this, do this. That is what we do at National Council of Sports. But the, 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 the function of running the sports remain entirely with the different sports disciplines we have within and outside the country. And for us, maybe what I can add on that is that, you know, we don't have enough budget to run the, the sports. We have very small, uh, small budget, but we have 53 different sports disciplines to support. 
So in doing this, we need to have the, the, the budget we have is very little. We cannot run sports. We have like about 408 million in the whole year to run sports. Definitely. Now, we have to look for a way out there to, to generate funds, to support uh, sports, and to run other activities. And we do this by encouraging, I mean, by partnering with the other, other NGOs, like the corporate bodies like MTN, Airtel, Martin Dew, those kind of organizations. But we are also in the process of negotiating with the government to start a lottery for sports. Yeah. Mr. Bosco, this is a very good uh, uh, concept. You, are, you talked about the lottery, uh, lottery program for supporting sports. We've seen all the big uh, Western uh, superpowers doing this, like the National Rotary here is the one funding even this gymnasium where we sat. We have come to study and see how you can develop boxing for Uganda uh, because boxing is one of your key disciplines which you support. Yes. Um, we've seen so many places. You look at the stadiums, some of them they are partly funded by the National Rotary. Yeah. So we thank you for coming up with that concept of uh, uh, sports rotary for Uganda and we think that that will be one of the uh, key funding factor for our sporting disciplines in the country. Thank you so much. Now, since you are getting ready to uh, prepare the boys for the, uh, the future coming Commonwealth Games, let us have a look around in the gymnasium here so that you know where you can bring your boys to get ready to uh, fight for Uganda. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Now, this is the Peacock Gymnasium. We are in the uh, aerobic space here. And uh, this, you can see the walls full of mirrors. When anyone is doing any sporting activities, they want to mirror themselves and understand that what they're doing, they're mm. doing it the right way. Mainly the boxing, you learn shadow box when you're looking in the mirror. Okay. Kickboxing is the same thing. Then from there, they'll take you downstairs to teach you how to punch the bars yeah. and whatever going on. And then there are some people who want to do their training privately. So they can use this place mm. and no one can see what they're doing. So they can look it up. Why, no, no. why do they have a music system then? The music system is obvious. Uh, uh, music makes someone be, uh, feeling at home. It's a catalyst for someone when they're exercising. Okay. It warms them up. But yeah. now, Dan, you are a sport uh, promoter. Yes, sir. How, how do my, uh, my, 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 my athletes of uh, kickboxing benefit from this kind of facilities? You know, kickboxing is becoming uh, one of our best... Uh, yeah. Sports discipline. Yeah, um, they can benefit in various ways if someone trains with such good facilities. One, um, they will be ready in a, in a various sectors. When you look at at home, mm. any fighter who does not really have such facilities cannot improve the right his level. Facilities. Yeah, the right yeah. facilities cannot improve his level of performance. Mm. You'll be staying uh, mainly at the standard level, not going mm. to a uh, higher level. Mm. Here, you can see they have uh, all the uh, uh, punching bags, they have the massaging rooms, they have cardi uh, cardiovascular center mm. where you do all the power and, uh, and uh, increasing your fitness through mm. those equipments. But mm. at home, someone may be carrying a rope mm. and climbing up what? <laughs> the, the, the mountain. And here, someone may stay in, the, in, in one place, but he can climb a, a, a hill on the treadmill, and then he can go down. All of a sudden, he can change from there, go to a, a massage room. Then they can see the muscles, which are really not doing very well, getting the blood supply very well. Then they can tell him, okay, we need to change this, your training program to another level, okay. which we don't have at home. So I believe that can put us... Uh, 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 deter the development of our, our performance for the sportsman. Okay. Yeah. When a sportsman is not clean, it's not really good. Mm. They end up increasing also spreading their uh, hepatitis B and A, mm. whereby here it has become as a regulation mm. that everyone who is coming in the public gymnasium, mm. like this one, you have to be injected with hepatitis A and B injections, mm. whereby you can't spread any, any mm. disease to anyone else because it comes through the sweating. Okay. Um, we need also to have very good doctors. You mm. look at this gym, there is a space for doctors at the mm. bottom. Mm. Then there is uh, a space where everyone keeps his 
clothing in the right department. Mm. So mm. It, and, showers, and showers hygienically is mm. very good. So uh, when anyone anyone comes in the gym, they know that okay, I'm gonna have my stuff kept properly. Mm. No one can touch it, and they are not mixing with anyone else, and I cannot get any maybe infection. Okay. Yeah. So those small things can increase the performance of someone. Okay. Yeah. In these gymnasiums, um, there are professional guys who train you, who tell you what to eat. Mm. And when you go in their canteen, mm. the food that is there is for those activities that you're doing. Mm. So you're going to eat the right food. There is no matoke. Mm. There is no matoke because oh, you, I want matoke or I want... Uh, what you'll find there is for people who are working out. Mm. So we need this kind of advices uh, okay. for our talents to come up really, really well. Okay. Uh, because you'll find a very young child, 18, 19, 18, is going to be very strong. The way he punches or the way he kicks the ball is different from back home. Mm. And they will be having strength everywhere because of the way they eat and the way they are handled professionally. Okay. We are missing that badly, badly. badly. I, think, I think that all comes back to uh, grassroots. You have to start from grassroots. Yeah. 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 When you go to the grassroots, also the uh, sporting bodies, they have to know that we have also doctors who are specialized in this sector. You cannot have one doctor who is the doctor of the muscles advising someone how to eat in the sports industry. No. They are specialist doctors who are for dieting that mm. sector. Mm. And they know that a sportsman or a footballer, an athlete, he goes to, he must eat this and he must all follow this uh, program to be in the, uh, in the right position to increase his performance. And, uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, maybe one more thing, which is very, very important that is lacking in our sports activities back home. We always talk about the money. Mm. We don't have money to do this. We don't have a mind to do this. But when you look at, for example, in this country, it's, money is not the first thing. The will, like you said, the will, they have so many volunteers. Mm. So many people are interested in doing these things for free. For example, him, me, or him. No one is paying us to do anything. Mm. In fact, we put in our own money. Mm. And you're not expecting to get out money. Mm. But that will, if you have the love for what you're doing. It's a key factor. Yeah. It's a key factor. You, you, your happiness will be the success of someone. Mm. Like looking at a young boy coming up and becoming a professional footballer. That will make you happy. Mm. And you say, oh, thinking, I was part of him. Yeah, I was part I of made him. him I made him to be what he is. Mm. Yeah. That's what people here do. When you look at a person like Mofara, the man who found him, he was his PE teacher. PE teacher, mm. yeah. He is still and a PE the one, teacher. Yeah, definitely. He's not getting anything more out of it. But he say, oh, yeah. I found him. He's very proud to be him part of him. That's it. Mm. That's it. Yeah, I, love, that's what we need. It's about passion. Yeah, that's being passionate about the sport. Uh, sporting industry and also we believe as the government mm. uh, we may have this program of national uh, sports rotary mm. but we should also understand our culture that some people may have the rotary there but they may not buy it mm. then we have to come up with a solution how to teach them that what you are doing here you are giving something back to, to the community, community. Mm. it's not for buying and winning for you but also you are buying to help the community, the community. The community mm. then if this goes into their uh, uh, understanding then they will buy the rotary mm. they will know okay i'm buying this i'm helping a son of so and so from masaka from alua from that's it mm. yeah so we need to educate our culture why this rotary is introduced in the country okay yeah yeah that's a good idea Thank you. And uh, surprisingly, most of the Ugandan boxers have come through here. Juko Justin, Jack, uh, Jackson Asiku. Uh, also, Mayweather has been training here. Uh, I trained in this gym. John Mugabe, when we were here, they passed through here when he was finished. What about Nyakana? has been in this gym before. Okay. He came here. Yeah. Okay. A chairman, now we are under. Uh, uh, the cardiovascular and power center for Peacock Gymnasium. These equipments here, almost we don't have it in Uganda because I know one gym which is for the National Council of Sports, I don't know, it is in Nachibubo, which has got these facilities, but they are for 19, 
maybe 70s. Then what that is why I'm here. I, yeah. I want to see the, the level at which people are now yeah. operating. So, so that we can also transform ours at National Council of Sports. Definitely. You now yes. cannot uh, uh, compare Gorola carrying a, a, a load, tire. a tire, and you compare this person who is coming every day and he lifts the weights according to the uh, sizes he wants. So they have a, a choice to choose what they want to use in a day. They have dumbbells, they can lift the power lifting, they can work on their legs, they can work on their upper body with all these facilities here. So we need such equipment in the country so that we can uh, increase our performance. It is not only that we cannot afford it, we can afford it with the will, love of the sport. Uh, if we have the passion, uh, we have the capability to gather all the funds to do this. Because we have big corporate companies in the country now. If the corporate companies can give back Corporation responsibility. Mm -hmm. We cannot try to raise money to buy such equipment for the national council. Yeah. Uh, chairman, uh, this is this is me here when I was still young. Although now the bed has come out, but uh, mm. I was still fit by then. Uh, this is the home of all boxers in the world. You can look at uh, Justin Juko. Yeah, I know say these are people who have trained here. Yeah. Justin Juko first here. Then uh, we look Tyson. at the top guys. Tyson, come and see Mayweather. This is the day when Mayweather trained here. You see how many people gathered around him? Hmm? Mm. That's Mayweather. You can see him. And uh, see what I was telling you, the massage room. That's the one behind. Which are the Gandans are here? Uh, I'll show you. John Bosco is somewhere. I'll see him. What about the beach? I see past here, beach, Mugabe, Mavinagila. Is this Amin? Oh, oh, oh my, is, my uh, brother. He's, he's our brother. <laughs> <laughs> but he looks like him. Uh, who, who is this? That one, uh, uh, Marvin Brilliant. He used to be in the... Uh, 80s. Many countries, one continent, many languages, one nation. Playing for the cup, all champions. Peace in the air, belly full of pride, legs full of swagger. Let me see your flags, waving no fear, so sincere. Slews you lose, like Tim Cruz. Mission possible, yeah. no division. Uh -huh. Tiger boots, yeah. no illusion. Yeah. Do it for your fans, uh -huh. do it for your nation, uh -huh. do it for yourself. Uh -huh. Put some work in, yeah. beg your pardon. Uh -huh. Love comes first, yeah. games for deep uh -huh. Lock and heal up, much you need up. Let it off, creep and shake it like an earthquake. Pass it all around quick, don't deny me it. Bust some music, something that I leave for, both a leave for. Making no ski for the dark of your light. One people, you're short you told it. One people, you're about evil. Man to a Zulu, Shanti for who? One people, Africa. One people, Africa. Hi, we are here with uh, the National Council of Sports Chairman, Mr. Uh, Bosco Ogwal. Um, Mr. Ogwal, uh, this is the Leighton Rand Stadium where we're going to have the finals of Africa Cup of Nations. We wanted you to come and visit these facilities today so that you know how serious the diaspora with the sporting projects to, uh, to develop for all our young footballers in the world, in Uganda and the general of Africa. This is the place where we're going to have our finals and what do you think about these facilities? Well, we already talked about uh, sports development in diaspora yeah. and uh, 
the first thing we have talked about is a uh, uh, recognition of UK, uh, FUFA UK, mm. and once that one is done, mm. I think it'll be it'll give us a, a good ground to work together. Mm. And if we are working together, that is the time when uh, Chairman National Council of Sports can come and visit you uh, to watch your African Cup of Nations game at uh, London. Yeah, and and I can promise you, mm. if uh, you do well, and Uganda goes to final, no doubt I can come there with my, my board members. Yeah. We have got now the rights to brand inside the stadium on that day. Come 31st of May, we want to see that Uganda can brand our nation inside the stadium here. As we talked before, that is about branding the nation and selling tourism sector for the country. Tourism sector can come on board and work with you to see that we brand this stadium on that day? Yeah, that, no, that is now the function of the marketing executive of uh, maybe FOFA UK or yeah. uh, African Cup of Nations uh, marketing department. But what is there is that I can assure you of the support you will get yeah. from our partners in uh, uh, sports development, especially um, MTN, yeah. um, um, net, mobile network, yeah. uh, Mountain Dew, mm. Coca-Cola. Yeah. Those are people who have come out and have, have supported mm. the development of football in Uganda. There are also other organizations who have, who have come out like uh, Airtel, like uh, there are many. So if the marketing team from here can liaise with them to support the, the sports development, there's no reason why you people do not advertise them here. Yeah, um, no question about it will be knocking to their doors any time from now. How should we go about it to scout with the, your, uh, with the FUFA Uganda? I've really told you that we are actually going to rely on you mm -hmm. to identify for us the, the, sport, the sporting talents which is there, mm -hmm. whether here or at home yeah. back in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And it is your responsibility to nurture them through all the ladders, to, to see them reach where they're supposed to reach. And uh, whether you pick them from Uganda or you pick them from here, what we want is identifying the talents, nurturing them, and making them climb through the ladders to the top. So whether you identify the players from Uganda and then bring them here, we have no problem. In fact, we would love to see that. What we want is that at the end of the day, that person should excel to represent Uganda at any level. How should we get Uganda to have such a pitch? No. You know, when I looked at this thing, I thought it was uh, artificial. No, no, this is grass. This is grass. Yeah. Yeah. You feel it yourself. Mm. No, this is a good idea. It is, uh, in fact, if we could get something like this, if we could also maintain our stadium like this, then we know we are also there like others. But we have also tried, you know, with our, at our standard, you have been to Kampala, you have seen Nambole. Definitely. We have tried to also bring it uh, to some level, but we, this is where we also want to reach. As a, the, as the vice chairman for far, uh, UK, um, I'm guaranteeing you that we're going to be here in the finals come May 31st and we are going to invite you like you've promised that you're going to attend. We want our Ugandan community to come and feel the difference and they feel the atmosphere and encourage everyone to come and participate. When these young boys are being coming up from the UK, which guarantees or which opportunities do they have? to represent Uganda, the national uh, Uganda football team? You know, to represent uh, the Uganda, Uganda Dias, or to join Uganda Queens, yeah. is, on, is based on your, your, it's on merit. Yeah. You must excel, you must really show that you are the one, the right person to join the Queens. Yeah. Normally they pick the best. Yes. So if somebody has excelled, then there is no doubt that that person is going to be identified and it will be picked to go and play for the Queens. It has just happened here in the UK. Yeah. One of you under uh, your team you, you, in FUPA UK, yeah. you, uh, somebody has, was identified. But we may not identify him if we don't come here. But if church people have opportunity to go and play home, they can be identified from home there. And then, you know what, oh, they will be in the team. But, uh, okay, given the opportunity that we, are, we also do come here to, to, to like you are inviting me to come and watch this game. Yes. I, with the, together with the team I'm coming with, we may also be able to identify some good players who can play for the Cranes, and, and that is how they can be identified to play in the Cranes. You know, it is on merit. You must really prove that you can uh, defend. You are, you are worthy. 
Yeah, um, in the previous tournament, we didn't perform really very well. That's why we had to change the, the, the committee members on our FUFA UK because we wanted to participate and compete for the, for the trophy. As the organizers of the Africa Cup uh, UK, we want to be part of the finals. Uh, we are intending to get some players from Uganda to come and, info, uh, and uh, strengthen our squad in the UK. Uh, which uh, guarantees or which promises do we have that we will be uh, helped or advised in any way uh, to bring those players uh, in the UK to come and participate and them getting a chance to be uh, supported by the international community. Once you get affiliated with the National Council of Sports, it is automatically that uh, automatically you will now be uh, working with the FUFA Uganda. It will not be very difficult for you people to also scout from home there and say we want so and so to come and play for UK, I mean FUFA UK. That, that is a very simple thing, just a matter of cooperating with the new uh, FUFA which is coming in office and then of course working with National Council of Sports to identify some talents from there to be developed and nurtured. So that one is a very simple thing, just a matter of identifying whom you want. And the diaspora officials in different sporting background opens up the bridge to develop sports at the grassroots level, both in Uganda and the UK. Run, Kadere. Run, Kadere.